the story of India's remarkable transformation from an insular agrarian economy to a global industrial powerhouse is incomplete without saluting the laudable contribution of the Central Excise Department. Truly following the motto, Desh Sevarth Kar Sanchai, the exceptionally diligent and dedicated Central Excise Officers assured domestic manufacturers of a transparent and fair tax administration that encourages voluntary tax compliance. The central excise revenues they collect provide the world-class infrastructure of modern India. Airports, ports, flyovers, hospitals, schools and colleges. Central excise plays a pivotal role in nation building. The policy initiatives and various trade facilitation measures taken by the central excise department act as a catalyst for the growth of domestic industry, thereby generating much needed resources for development projects and welfare schemes of the government. Thus, it makes a significant contribution to the country's economic growth. Taxes on manufactured goods have been collected historically from the Mauryan period in the third century BC, as mentioned in Arthashast to the Mughal period. In British India, excise duties were collected through separate enactments for various commodities. The levy of excise duty on salt and its defiance by Mahatma Gandhi through his famous Dandi March in the year 1930 awoke the national consciousness. Towards the end of the British period, all enactments of excise duties were consolidated into one act, the Central Excise and Salt Act 1944. This marked the beginning of an integrated system of collecting excise duties in India. On 15th August 1947, an independent India began its journey to shape the destiny of millions of its citizens. Meticulous planning laid the foundation for a strong economy of the future. The Central Excise Department played a crucial role by providing the much-needed revenue to fund various developmental schemes. At the time of independence, central excise revenue was merely 50 crore rupees. Since then, the revenue has gone up to 1,75,844 crore rupees in 2012-2013, owing to the phenomenal industrial development. The hard work and efforts of the department to simplify and rationalize various procedures of taxation and the improved delivery standards have contributed substantially to the buoyancy in tax revenue. The Central Excise Department has also shown the much-needed adaptability to facilitate domestic industry while safeguarding revenue, placing greater trust on taxpayers. The department abolished the earlier system of physical control where an excise officer was posted in each manufacturing unit for the clearance of goods and introduced self-removal procedure in 1969. With this, the responsibility of determining duty liability was passed on to the taxpayers themselves and a pre-authenticated gate pass was issued by the central excise officer to clear the goods. The year 1986 saw the introduction of ModVAT aimed at reducing the cascading effect of taxation and making businesses more competitive. In 1994, the then Finance Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh brought about revolutionary changes by introducing invoice-based system and abolishing the gate pass system. Efforts to simplify procedure of taxation achieved another milestone in 1996 when assessees were allowed clearance through self-assessment process against their invoices. In the year 2000, fortnightly payment of duty was introduced, which was further relaxed to monthly payment in 2003. Rapid globalization posed new challenges, and in 2006, the Finance Minister Sri P. Chidambaram introduced the globally successful model of large taxpayer units to provide single window clearance facility to large taxpayers. The Central Excise Department had come of age. In the near future, central excise duty and service tax are expected to merge, setting the stage for the biggest indirect tax reforms, namely goods and service tax. GST is expected to subsume a large number of central and state level indirect taxes and would integrate India into a common market. At the policy level, procedural simplification and uniformity in administration would be achieved through regular and close interaction with trade. Trade and industry are the partners in progress for the department. 
the approach towards the trade shall be firm, fair and non-adversarial. Information technology would continue to be the driving force for modernization of central excise and increased trade facilitation. The use of information technology aims at reducing the physical interface between tax administration and industry and curtailing transaction costs, thus promoting a culture of voluntary tax compliance. On the other hand, the department is relying on and strengthening non-intrusive methods of collection of information and analysis at the back end for better compliance and for enforcement. Acutely conscious of their responsibility to create an enabling environment for sustaining the momentum of economic activity, the central excise officers have successfully balanced the demands for law enforcement and taxpayer facilitation. In the current global economic scenario, which is at times unpredictable, the dedication of the central excise department in supporting the domestic industry is a constant. Central excise, where excellence is a way of life, where service to the nation is a passion, where dedication is a cherished tradition. Jai Hind!